And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. To you it shall be for food. Genesis 129. Man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. Psalm 78, 25. Everyday Manna with Lisa. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Everyday Manna. Today, we are going to make a taco pie, a chopped vegetable salad, and to go alongside that, a sea salt caramel apple pie that could not be simpler. We're gonna do a little multitasking today. Now, in this skillet, I have our ground beef. I use, I'm using ground chuck. I'm just browning that. That's all that's going on there. And in this skillet, I have some butter that I am melting. And I have two apples. You can use whatever kind of apple you want that I have peeled. And I am just going to kind of dice these a little bit small. Um, you know, not too terribly tiny, but you want to get them small enough that they cook quickly. And as I chop, I'm just going to drop those in the butter because I'm actually going to saute these a little bit before we proceed on. So if you cut out your core and get a flat surface to work on, then the apple dicing goes much quicker than trying to do it with a rounded surface. So always work with a flat surface. I'm using Gala apples, but you could use Granny Smith, you could use Golden Delicious, you could use Honey Crisp, you could use any kind of apple that you like. I personally don't think Red Delicious bake very well. Now, they're great to eat out of hand, but I don't care for them for cooking. But the Gala apples do really well for cooking. Just going to saute up a couple of apples. You could also do this with pears if you wanted to. That would be very good. Could really use any kind of fruit that you wanted to in this. But apple seems to go really well with the caramel, which we're going to drizzle it with. <clears throat> You'll have to forgive me today. My voice is um, going. I've been actually been sick and I've, this is the first day I've had a decent voice in a while so forgive the raspiness well, we're going to cook together anyway because I don't know about you but I still have to cook whether I can talk or not at home so we're going to do this <clears throat> I'll have to clear my throat a lot too forgive me all right now we're going to saute these apples in some butter just until they're softened a little bit. We're gonna add a little cinnamon to those. You could do apple pie spice if you wanted. We're also gonna add some brown sugar. I'm using light brown sugar to that. And you know, anytime <clears throat> that you're cooking, you need to add just a pinch of salt, not much, just literally a pinch. It's probably not even an eighth of a teaspoon in that going to let those simmer for just a minute or two and we'll check on our ground beef this is just browning up real nice I'm using ground chuck you could use ground sirloin or ground chuck which is what I'm using I typically don't use just the regular ground beef I find it too fatty but if that's all you have that's fine it'll work you just will need to drain it Ground chuck, I think, is the perfect blend for these kinds of dishes because it has enough fat to be flavorful. And you need a little bit in here. If you wanted to add a diced up onion to this, you could. Now, this is just simmering away. And while that is simmering, we are going to do the next component of this, which is biscuits. We're not going to do a pie crust. If you don't know how to open one of these, you just, I hit it, peel off the outer edge, and then tap it on the edge of your counter, and it just pops right open. These are just canned. I like the flaky biscuits, but you get the kind that you like. And we're going to cut these into each half into like eight pieces. 
Try to keep them separate if you can. One, two, three, four. So cut it in half, and cut it in half again. Cut each half in half into eighths. And I've got two cans here, 10 biscuits total. You use whatever kind you like. I like the flaky. I think it just adds a little bit of a, when it puffs, the biscuits, the juices and the apples get in between the layers and I think it tastes wonderful. This is one of my favorite quick, easy desserts. I love apple pie, but <clears throat> most of the time I don't have time to make a homemade pie crust. You could, you could if you wanted to, but this is easy. This is meant to be quick, which is why we're using these biscuits. We're going to bake it, so you need to have your oven preheated to 350 degrees. And those actually are looking good. Oh, look that brown sugar mixes with the butter and it just caramelizes and it is really so, so good. Now, I'm gonna cut that heat off. I'm just gonna toss these in there. Now, if you have a big skillet that is oven proof, you can use the, you can just leave this in the skillet. Now, this is actually oven proof, this handle is. If you have a handle like this, and that's all you want to use, you don't want to use a separate dish, cover that in foil, aluminum foil, you know, a few layers, and you can put that in the oven. But we're going to actually transfer it to a baking dish here in just a second. Now I'm going to get that. Let's do the next can, because you need about 10 or so biscuits. So... If you want to make your own, go right ahead. That would be fine. But the point of this is easy. This makes a good breakfast dish too with a cup of coffee. If you want to serve it for dessert, which is how I'm going to do it, um, you can you know, serve it with some, with some uh, ice cream if you wanted to. It's good. The heat from the pie kind of melts the ice cream a little bit. And it, Makes a sauce, which is really good. Get some of my work surface here. What you're gonna do is coat these pieces of biscuit with that apple pie mixture. I actually think that's enough of the biscuits because they're gonna puff. Stir that together. Save these for another use. You can bake them up and eat them. And then transfer that mixture to a baking dish. Or you can leave it in your oven-proof skillet, whatever you want to do. Spread it out evenly. Now remember, those biscuits are going to puff. And we're going to make a... a Kind of a, for lack of a better term, a glue to pour in there. I've got some half and half, one egg yolk, not the whole egg, just a yolk. Um, some brown sugar and some cinnamon. And we want to stir all that together. Oven at 350 degrees. Just get all of that incorporated. Pour the over top evenly of your mixture, over your mixture. Put it in the oven, it needs to bake for about 30 minutes. So I'm gonna take a quick break, just clean this up, put this in the oven, and when I come back, we're gonna get started on the rest of that taco pie. I'll be back in just a minute. Alrighty, welcome back. Now our apple pie is in the oven and our beef is almost browned. And I've got some green pepper here. 
that I'm going to chop. That knife is too small. Well, when you get used to working with a big knife, you just can't hardly do it with those little ones. Just chopping up a green pepper. We're making a taco pie. I love tacos. My family loves tacos and fajitas and things like that. So we're just going to saute this in that um, beef mixture. Now, that's why you want to have a little bit of fat in there because you want to have some kind of uh, oil to saute those peppers in. And I actually think half of that's enough. We'll put the rest of that in the chopped salad that we're going to make in a minute. All righty. Just make sure that all that beef gets browned. Very, very important. And then we're going to add in our spices, which is some garlic powder, because I don't have any fresh garlic. If you had fresh garlic, by all means, use your fresh garlic. And in, in Mexican cooking, oregano is used a lot. Um, so we're going to add just a little bit of dried oregano. Oregano is one of those uh, herbs that I actually prefer dried. And then I just have one package of the taco seasoning mix that you can either make yourself, we've done that together, or you can just buy it. Remember, we always add our spices and herbs before we add any liquid because the oils and the fat bloom those spices. <clears throat> Again, pardon my voice, it's going. Let me grab a drink of water here real quick. Now to that, we're going to add just a touch of water, not much. We're also going to add one can of tomato sauce. Or you could use crushed tomatoes if you wanted. The fire roasted diced crushed tomatoes are really good in this dish. Okay, you could add some corn, you could add some beans, you could add whatever you wanted to at this point. <clears throat> Excuse me. All righty, now we are going to transfer that mixture to a baking dish. Okay, if you wanted to serve it in your skillet, just proceed on after this step. <clears throat> okay. Now, over top of that, we're going to sprinkle some mozzarella cheese, shredded mozzarella. You could use uh, hotika cheese if you can find it. You can use any kind of a um, cheese that you like. I just, I like the meltiness of the mozzarella, and I think that's probably enough. Maybe a touch more on the edges here. Okay, then we're gonna make a batter to go on top of that, which is our pie. Okay, I have here some half and half. I actually think I'm gonna move that to there. I have in this bowl some half and half, and I'm gonna add some all-purpose flour to that. A little bit of uh, canola or vegetable oil and a couple of eggs, the whole egg. We're gonna whisk that together, and we're gonna make a batter with that. <clears throat> you could add half flour and half cornmeal if you wanted. That would be very good. All right, and this will be a kind of a thick, you can see it's a, a thick batter. Don't overmix it because if you overmix it, it gets tough. I, that's true of any baked good. Let me put these in the sink. Okay, let me get a spatula and we're just going to pour this over top of this evenly. Okay. All righty. And then. As a final top, topping, 
Okay, just kind of spread that over evenly. Okay, that's going to puff up as it cooks. We're going to top it with a little bit of, I'll just use some of the rest of this mozzarella. A little bit, not a lot, just a little. And you can totally make this ahead and then just pop it in the oven when you get home. That'd be fine. This is just a little bit of grated Parmesan. Again, if you can find the Hotika cheese or Oaxaca cheese would be really good. Any Mexican grating cheese. And I find the grocery stores nowadays really do have a wonderful selection of international cheeses. Okay. And then that's going to go in the oven underneath our pie uh, at 350 degrees for about 20 minutes until that pastry cooks. The rest of it's already done. So the topping gets done. I'm just going to clean up my mess. When I come back, we're going to get started on our salad and our food will be ready. And the best part, we get to eat. I'll be back in just a minute. Now, our apple pie is done, and as you can see, it's puffed up, it's golden, it's brown, it's delicious. I'm letting it cool for just a second, and then we'll finish that up. Our chopped vegetable salad. Now, not all salads have to have lettuce in them. You can pick whatever kinds of vegetables that you like. I have here just some chopped up cauliflower, some shredded carrots, I'm going to put some celery in mine because that is one of my favorites. So I'll just top off the tops and bottoms. It's been washed. And you got to remember you're going to be eating this as a salad. So you don't want big pieces. You want it to be, you know, relatively small. And you can put whatever kinds of vegetables that you like. Broccoli would be good in this. Um, Anything that you like. You could put lettuce in it if you wanted. Red pepper. I'm going to use the other half of that green pepper. I'm just going to put in some celery. Our taco pie is done. The last couple of minutes, if you want to put it under the broiler and kind of get that topping really good and brown, you can. Let's add in some celery here. I personally adore red cabbage. So I'm going to chop some red cabbage. Now you can uh, leave this out if you so desire. Oftentimes I will use red cabbage instead of lettuce for my salads because I love it. I just think it is so, so good. Sometimes I'll just chop up some red cabbage and put dressing on it with some bacon and cheese and have salad. Whatever else I want to put in there. Just whatever you like. You could do some green onions or red onions if you wanted to. I think that's probably enough. We'll do a little bit of this. Make it colorful. Make it pretty. Okay, and I've had this other half of this green onion, so I'm, or green pepper, so I'm going to put it in there. If you want to chop up some cucumber, that would be good. Radishes would be good. Whatever you like. You do what vegetables you like and you want to eat. Okay, now we're going to make a dressing for this. I have in here some apple cider vinegar and some olive oil, some salt, some pepper, some Italian seasoning, and just a pinch of cayenne pepper. Just whisk that together. And this is one of those salads, if you want to make this ahead, it's perfectly fine. If you have a traditional salad where you've got lettuce, you don't want to dress it before you serve it because it will wilt. 
Not the case with this one. So this is a great vegetable salad to have on like a buffet bar type thing. Let's see, I need a big sturdy spoon. Stir that together and you've got a delicious vegetable salad that will keep for you know several days in your refrigerator. If you want to make this like at the beginning of the week and eat on it all week, I do this all the time at home. So I'm a big veggie eater and I will make up something like this and I will eat on it for, you know, till I get it done. It will keep three or four days in your refrigerator. It's a great make ahead dish. And that's all there is to it. If you want to, you know, sprinkle over maybe a little bit more salt and pepper, feel free to do that. Add anything that you like. This is just how I like it. If I had some fresh garden cucumbers, I totally would add those in or some little radishes would be delicious on that. But could that be simpler? No. And that's a healthy side dish to have any night of the week. Now, let's move over here to our apple pie. This is still very warm. I have in this bowl some powdered sugar, and I'm going to make a little glaze with some, I'm using half and half, but you could use regular milk if you wanted to. You want just a thin little glaze. And add just a little bit more powdered sugar. I got that a little too thin. I keep my powdered sugar just in a Ziploc baggie. Add a little more sugar to that, make a glaze. You don't have to do this, but it does add a little bit of a, um, you know, the uh, icing that you get on, oh my goodness, cinnamon rolls. This is kind of that kind of a glaze. Switch to a whisk, get those lumps out, and that's perfect. That's absolutely perfect. So you would want to take your spoon and drizzle this all over the top of your pie. Biscuit bake, whatever you want to call it. Oh, I cannot wait to eat this. And that will, that will melt down in there and mix with those warm apples. Oh, so good. And then, as if that's not going to be delicious enough, I bought, this is just a store bought, I like the sea salt caramel, but you could get any kind of an ice cream topping. You know where they sell the chocolate sauces and all that for ice cream? They have so many different kinds of toppings. I personally really like the sea salt caramel. And so you want to just drizzle some of that over top of your pie. And that could not be simpler. Oh, so good. Serve this alongside again. If you wanted to top that with a little bit of ice cream, would be delicious. Let's see if that's, no, I can move it. All righty. So there is our wonderful caramel apple pie. Now, let's get our taco pie here. And as you can see, that batter that we made puffed up, and then we just turned the broiler on for just a couple of minutes to brown up that cheese a little bit. I would let that set for, you know, maybe five or ten minutes before you cut into it. Let the heat kind of calm down just a little bit and it um, will firm up to where you can cut it better instead of just it. If you cut it when it immediately comes out of the oven, it's just going to spill everywhere. Same thing with lasagna. But if you let it set for like five to ten minutes and kind of firm up a little bit, it makes it a little easier to serve. If you wanted to top that with some chopped up parsley, you totally could. Or um, taco toppings, if you wanted to put some shredded lettuce some chopped tomato on top of that or on the side as you serve, that would be good too. But we're, I'm serving it with my chopped vegetable salad, so I'm not going to do that. But these are just some quick, easy dishes that you can try any night of the week for your family. If you want to make this salad ahead and eat on it all week, you go right ahead. That will be a hit any time of the week, as will this. This, if, if there are leftovers, 
the next morning warmed up with your coffee. Oh, so, 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 so good. These are just some quick, easy recipes for you to try. Try them, let me know what you think, and I will see you next time on... Thank you for watching Everyday Mana with Lisa. This program is made possible by viewers like you. Your support is continually needed to keep Christian programming on the air. Please send your best financial gift to Living Faith Television in care of Everyday Mana, P.O. Box 1867, Abingdon, Virginia, 24212.